that's it. You know, what's the damage? 49p, please. 49p. Buy it. Talk about the last of the big spenders. How's it going, anyway? Great. Hey, should have done it years ago. Done what? Got my dad married off again, and out from under my feet. I thought you were dead set against this wedding. Uh, that was before I had the house to myself. Uh, you can't whack it. I wouldn't get too keen on the idea if I were you. I reckon your dad might have something to say about that. He is trying to sell it, you know. Yeah, I know. Don't look like it'll be too long, neither. Got another couple coming along tonight. Have you heard from anyway, Elaine and your dad like? Ah, uh, Debbie rang up. Said they got there OK. Uh, Not since. Now she's one you will miss. Ah, uh, Debbie? Oh, yeah, like flipping toothache. Yeah, till it comes to the cleaning and washing. <laughs> What cleaning and what you <laughs> say is fit for a king was that? Did you say something? I said that breakfast was fit for a king, Mrs. Ogden. You certainly got away with an egg and a couple of rashes of streaky bacon. Oh, yes. Well, I never did have no complaints in that department, as you toast. Not for me, thanks. If you eat another crumb, I'll burst. Oh, oh well, if you're sure. <laughs> Positive. That was one thing I always insisted on with my late husband, you know. He never left the house without he had a full be <laughs> without a good breakfast inside him. Stoked him up for the day, did that. Well, he needed it, you know, being out in all weathers. Oh, not that you don't, of course. I mean, working in an office. I couldn't <laughs> agree more, Mrs. Sogden. The most important meal of the day is breakfast. Are you uh, always in the booking office, then? Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, must be very interesting, that. I mean, especially for you, being so interested in trains, like. Oh, yeah, it is. Mind you, it's not like it was in the old days. Old days? The great days of steam, Mrs. Ogden. Smoke hanging in the air. The noise. There's something about a steam loco. Oh, you're right there. They were slow, mucky and freezing. Not to an enthusiast, Mrs. Ogden. Believe me. Oh, well, no. <laughs> and uh, you've always been at Piccadilly, have you? Uh, but no, not always. Oh. And I'll not be there much longer if I don't get my skates on. Oh, I'll get your sandwiches. I've got your nice bit of boiled ham. You did say you like boiled ham. My favourite. Oh. You know, I can still hardly believe me good fortune. How do you mean? Finding such a homely place as this. Oh, oh hello. Uh, is Gloria there, please? Uh, Gloria Todd. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And uh, it's uh, Frank Harvey. Yes, yes, I'll hang on. Yeah. Gloria! Oh, <laughs> I see. Uh, well, uh, when do you expect her back in? Oh, I see. Uh, no, no. No message. No, I'll, uh, I'll ring back later. Yeah. Thanks. She's got to, then. Well, I don't want her. The fuss would have been creeper, Well, it's not like her to be late. Ha! You are. She'll be late for her own funeral, her, if nobody clocked her in. Hey, you didn't clock her in this morning, did you? No, I didn't. And it's a flaming good job I didn't, and I'll... I'd have been right in it. Well, I don't reckon she's coming in myself. Hmm. Well, she's picked a good day, hasn't she? Up to armpits in here. Ball's been buzzing round like a flaming wasp in there. Morning. 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 Hey, Emily. You don't have to have heard up from either, do you? As a matter of fact, I have. Her husband's just been on the phone. It seems she's picked up this flu bug that's going around. That's all we need, isn't it? Oh. She could be off all week, I'm afraid. All week? But jammy devil. Jammy? You don't reckon she's enjoying it, dear? Do you know, Vera, I sometimes wonder why you bother coming here at all, honest, I do. You've never stopped morning since you set foot through that door. Well, I hate Monday morning. You hate every flipping morning. That's not fair, either. No, it isn't. I'm not that gone on afternoons, neither. <laughs> Anything there you can't handle? No, I don't think so. There are a couple of letters you ought to see, but nothing urgent. Oh, well, I'd better make a move, then. Well, I'll say one thing to that Christine Millward. Mm -hmm. She's persistent, if nothing else. Christine Millward? The designer. The one who keeps trying to get you on the phone with a letter from her. She obviously feels she's getting nowhere telephoning. She wants to make an appointment to see you. <laughs> She'll be lucky. Oh, she seems to think she's got something worth discussing with you. They all have, Emily. They walk out of art school with wide-eyed idealism and think they're going to revolutionise the fashion world. Look, uh, just write to her, say, uh, thank you, but no thanks, OK? If you say so. I do. Emily, you haven't seen the Harrison file, have you? Did you bring it back? Bring it back? Well, I think it was among those you took home with you last night. Well, <laughs> do you ever get the feeling it's going to be one of those days? Frequently. Hey, 
You don't have to wait for me to turn up, you know, before you can make a start. Shan't be upset. I'll just have me five minutes, Betty. Yeah, so notice. Hey, now, hang on a minute. What? Now, let's get one thing straight, shall we, Betty? Mm -hmm. Now, you may have been round here longer than the cracks in that bar top, but until Beck gets back, I am the boss. Oh, don't worry, love. I know who the chief is round here. Mm. I just happen to have noticed that we're a little bit short on the Indians and all. Unless, of course, you're going to knock us cork leg by saying you've taken somebody on. Oh, give us a chance, Betty. I thought so. Well, when have I had time? Now, come on, be fair. Me be fair? You've known that Bet was going to go swanning off to Buxton on this management course ever since you moved in here. You didn't have to wait until she'd gone, did you? Now, look. Look, Betty. This isn't getting us anywhere, is it? You do realise, don't you, that there's not going to be any bar food. Hey, now, come on. I am not the genie of the flaming lamp, you know. I can't be in there getting the food. And out here see to the bar as well. Now, come on. All right, all right, Betty. You've made your point. You can leave the bar to me. Oh, look, we can't go on like this. You'll have to get somebody in. Otherwise, I mean, you're going to be on your own. I'm warning you. <laughs> ah, and I will, Betty, look. It's all in hand, believe me. <laughs> I don't suppose you can squeeze another cup, could you? I'm afraid no. I've let this one go cold. What, after all she's got? You'll be lucky. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah, you, I'm surprised you don't look like a flipping tea bag. <laughs> and you can shut your trap for now. Never said a word. I'll take it, the answer's no. Oh, well, uh, not to worry. I don't suppose I'll die of dehydration before lunchtime. Well, look, I can always throw up another pot, you know, what's a come in there? No, it doesn't matter, really, it doesn't. Hey, go on, you're entitled to your tea break, the same as the rest of us. Yeah. Well, not quite the same as the rest of you. Eh? Well, by my reckoning, you should have been back at work five minutes ago. Well, by my reckoning, well, we're five minutes late starting anyway, because of Ida. She was supposed to be milking, wasn't she, but she hadn't come in, has she? All right, Vera, but if you go and brew up again, you'll be ten minutes late starting, won't you? And if that happened, I don't think I'd be very popular with Mr. Baldwin. I'll get it. No, it doesn't matter. I'm going back anyway. Oh, right. Right. Oh. Hmm. Baldwin's casual. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm afraid you couldn't speak to Mr. Baldwin. He isn't here just now. Well, I'm sorry, it's difficult to say what time you'll be back. Who's calling? Oh, I see. Yes, Mrs. Millwood, Mr. Baldwin did see your letter. There'll be a reply in the post to you tonight. Well, no, I'm afraid he can't see you. He is very busy just now. Yes, I'll, I'll tell him you phoned. Goodbye. Right, come on, you lot. If Yangi Town was long, it would not be worth going back. It would oh. be dinner time. Hey, she's got a part, you know. Sure. I mean, whether she's I mean, you, you and all be right. Oh, okay. Do you know you even get a sound like playing in ball when well, they're all the same, aren't they? Oh, wow. Bosses, flipping slave drivers, a lot of them. Mm. Well, I know one who will want to be in any way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll jack. <laughs> You're jack a boss? Are we talking about the same fella? <laughs> yes, we are. Look, if that brewery hadn't been so flaming biased, our Jack could have been a boss at Rovers by now, couldn't they? Oh, you're not still going on about that, Vera. <laughs> well, why shouldn't I, eh? Our Jack would make as good a boss as Bet Lynch any day, ain't we? Hey, it's my other point there, you know, Ivy. You just spend more time in there than she does. <laughs> hey, and less of the lift, you eh? He never seriously reckoned he'd give you a chance, though, Vera. Not your Jack. Well, why not? Yeah, why not? Oh, He's done more than most, aren't he? He's push Newton and Ridley profits right through the roof, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Betty, love, these three fellas here could be dying of thirst. Hey, you yell at me once more, Jack Duckworth, and I'll guarantee it. I'm not a flipping octopus, you know. Right, what do you want before I change my mind? Set him up again. Uh, just half of me. I didn't hear you say just half, any chance did I? No, you didn't. I'll tell you what, you won't get many drunks in here. Hey? The time it takes to get served. You do want this all over your head, don't you? Well, you are a bit pushed, aren't you? One of us is lovely, that's for sure. Well, I don't see what the problem is. I thought barmaids were ten a penny. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, no, not like you, like casual staff. Don't tell me, tell him. I'll tell you what, if I were running this place, I wouldn't have you run on your fe off your feet, Betsy. No chance. I believe you and all. You wouldn't be able to move behind that bar for bodies, would you? All redheads, under 30, and not a brain between them. Well, I wouldn't have folk fighting, queuing up to get rid of the brass. Were you serious? Serious. When you applied to take over this place? Of course it was serious. Right up my street, this, isn't it? You're right, you know, Curly. I mean, if ever there was a face born to grin at you from over the bar top, he's got it. <laughs> the only problem is, he's more used to the brewery than this side of the bar. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong, because it would touch and go whether I got this place or not. 
What, you were on the shortlist? Close, girly. I got a letter, didn't I? Letter? What letter? From the brewery. Saying that to give my application careful consideration, careful, mind you, and while I wasn't in with a shout this time... Hey, you could just imagine the manager's director dictate... Oh, <laughs> words to that effect. To keep my name on file, and he felt more suitable come up, then did the invite me to kind of apply again, like. So, if he seems to be propping up the bar a bit more than usual, he's not skiving off. He's just doing a bit of field study, isn't he? While he waits from the call from on high. Am I right, Dad? I couldn't have said that better myself, son. No, no. All right, Bessie, look. No, I'm not. Good girl. Look, uh, now the rush is over, I think I'll nip out for ten minutes. Nip out? You're joking. Ten minutes, not a minute longer. Listen, if you think I'm stopping behind this bar on my own, well, you've got swamming off. Betty, love, you do want me to get somebody else in here now, don't you? Is that where you're going? Ten minutes. See ya. Pint, please, Betty. Oh, just a minute, love it. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Alf. You're a gent. Don't mention it. I wonder where you've been, actually. You've not done them around here for weeks. Ah, pressure of business. You know how it is, but never fret. I'll be getting down here to you sometime today. Hey, hey, hang on a minute. You mean that water's not for our windows? Well, I didn't say it was, did I? Well, I've got a few houses to do down Viaduct Street, but there's nobody in down there. But I think... Hey, yeah. cheeky monkey! Right, are you off, then? Ah, I won't be very long, though. Hey, and if Jack Duckworth sticks his nose around that door again, ask you for water, make sure his our windows is done. <laughs> if you have to time to drain five. <laughs> Ta Hello. Hello, Al. Hi. Hello. Go on. What we missed off this time? Pardon? Your order. Oh, you haven't forgotten anything. It's me. Honestly, I've got a memory like a sieve oh. these days. Join the club. <laughs> Go on, what is it this time? Tea bags and baked beans. And I'd better have a large tin. Norman would live on them if I let him. He's not the only one. Oh? His mate's as bad, young Kevin. In fact, if what he's brought in here this week is anything to go by, he is living on them. How's he coping, as he said? Well, he reckons he's doing all right. You don't sound so sure. We'll have to see how he feels when the house goes, won't we? I mean, life's not exactly going to be a bed of roses for him then, is it? Living in digs, his family 200 miles away. Anyway, anything else, love? Excuse me, lads. Hi, lads. Hello. There you are, Doc. Thanks, Betty, love. Yeah. Don't know how you do it for the money. <laughs> I don't know how I do it at all. I must be soft in the head. Ten minutes, he said, and I believed him. Phyllis Frank. Who else? Who well, is he? Well, he's getting help. He says that why couldn't use the phone like anybody else? <laughs> help? Yeah. <laughs> Won't go building your hopes too high if I was you. Hey, hey, hey. Why? I can't see those women in the betting shop being much easier, better. The betting shop? That's where he was going when I saw him last. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, love it. Take out, please. Certainly, love. The lodger's settling in the nilder. Oh, yes. He felt it all oh, as soon as he walked through the door. Keeping him under wraps, aren't you? Eh? Oh, we've not seen a lot of him yet, have we? Oh, well, that's because he's quite happy where he is, Tar, very much. No, he's a bit of a home bird, is Mr. Wakefield. He'd sooner stop in with one of his railway books than be propping up some bar. He'll make himself known when he's good and ready. Mm, keeps himself to himself, like, does he? <laughs> yes, he does. And that suits me fine. It's a pity more folk weren't like that round here. Oh, hey. Now, I wanted a word with you as it happens. Me? Yes, about your dad's house. Oh, yeah? What about it? Well, I just wanted to make sure you'd be choosy about who you're selling to. You know, you can so easily lower the tone of a neighbourhood and, well, once that starts, heaven knows where it'll end. Oh, it'll be choosy, all right, will me, Dad? Oh, I'm very pleased to hear it. The first person I come up with the money in the stick of little mitts and it's theirs. Ah, oh, now, hang on a minute. I'm sorry, Mrs Ogden, but it does happen to be his house and it does happen to need the cash. So it looks as if we have to keep his fingers crossed, does it? Well, so very much both of you. For now. Oh, oh sorry, I'll deliver after Thank you. you. There you go. <laughs> Excuse me, lads. Oh, oh you've found your way back then, have you? <laughs> Sorry, Betty, love. Only I bumped into this fella. <laughs> Don't worry about it, love. Still, I mean, as long as you found somebody to be back a bar with me, you know, it's time well spent, isn't it? <laughs> well? Well, it's uh, not that easy, is it? Not to find the right type of person. No, I don't suppose it is. Especially when they're, they're running at Adock Park or Doncaster or somewhere. You've never been looking for staff. You've been at that betting shop. All right, I might have just called him while I was out, but that doesn't mean to say I haven't got somebody lined up now, does it? Have you? One phone call this afternoon, Betty, and we have cracked it. <laughs> On my way, Squire. Mm -hmm. 
Pedro. Is that all time it is? Yes, it is. You've got half an hour to go yet. Oh. Do you know it feels like a fortnight since I come through that door this morning? Yeah, it does to me and all. I've had to listen to your moaning all day. We don't feel like working winter, do you? Not when it's dark outside. It hasn't been dark all morning, dearie. Mm. Well, it might as well have been for all we know. Cooked up in here all day. We're like playing in battery ends, aren't uh, we? No, not quite, because the battery and only cackles when it comes up with goods. <laughs> Can I help you? I was looking for Mr. Baldwin. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I'm afraid he's not here. He's not back yet? No, he's not. In fact, we're not even sure if he'll make it back for tonight. No, but I'll bet you a pound for a pinch of muck he'll be back in time to be propping that bar up across there come out fine. Bar? Yeah, Rovers, Cross Road. Oh, I see. Well, thanks very much. Uh, is there anything I can do, uh, uh, Miss? Mrs. Mrs. Millward. Uh, no, I don't think so. Thanks all the same. It was Mr. Baldwin I wanted to see. Oh, well, uh, uh, when I see him, I'll tell him you've called, eh? Hey, listen, uh, yeah, I'm over at the Rover's Return at the moment, you know, relief manager, and I just happened to find that I'm desperate for extra bar staff, and knowing how well you and me got on in the past, I... <laughs> yeah. So how are you fixed, eh? Well, as soon as possible, like tomorrow. Oh, I see. Well, when will you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, could you give us a bell as soon as you do now? Good girl. Fringe benefits? Of course. Why do you think I called you? <laughs> I'll see you, kid. Yeah, fine now. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> well? I think we've cracked it, Betty. <clears throat> you think? Just waiting for confirmation. Look, it's not confirmation I'm interested in. It's another pair of hands. And that's what you all have. I told you. Trust your Uncle Frank. What <laughs> party? Well, it's about time, innit? I mean, how long is it since we've had a few birds round, a bit of music and a bit of, uh, you know... No chance. What do you mean, no chance? After what happened last time? Nothing happened last time. Oh, no, only Mrs Bishop came in and caught us at it. At it? Didn't exactly make the Sunday papers, did it? Well, perhaps not, but there's no way Mrs Bishop will allow if the you kind of flash that you've got listen, in listen, you big soft lump. Well, you're on about a party. I know I'm on about a party, but nobody mentioned Mrs. Bishop until you started chucking your fourth pen up with him. Well, where then? Look, a certain pan of a mate of ours who's found himself with vacant possession. Kevin, who else? When? Well, don't know yet. I mean, there's still a few minor details to be sorted out, isn't there? Like what? Like I haven't told him yet. <laughs> I, uh, haven't had the pleasure. Well, that's hardly my fault. You're a very elusive man. What? Really? At least as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm still not with you. Chris. Chris Millwood. Chris Millwood, um... Designer. Oh, that's right. So you're Christine Millwood. You look surprised. Well, to tell you the truth, you're not what I was expecting. And what were you expecting? Oh, some starry-eyed art student. Sorry to disappoint you. But you haven't. Well, I don't know what you wanted me for, but uh, it must be important for you to track me down here. Well, it is. To me, anyway. You've got five minutes. What can I say? Yes. Let's uh, take the weight off our feet, shall we? <laughs> I don't know where they go, I'm afraid. You'll have to put them away. Oh, don't worry about that. It's very good of you to dry up for me. It's my pleasure. Pleasure doing pots? <laughs> well, perhaps pleasure isn't quite the right word. It's just something I've always done, that's all. Yeah, well, I suppose it's only natural when you're living at home. There was just uh, you and your mother, you said. That's right. Mm. She must have meant a lot to you. Yeah. She did. I seemed very empty without her when she... Well, passed on. Oh, I know what you mean. 
I felt exactly the same when Stan went. Like a pea rattling round on a drum. Still, this is my home, what me and Stan worked for all them years. It's a lovely little home, Mrs Ogden. You're very lucky. I wouldn't have dreamed of keeping our place on, not after Mother had gone. How big was it? It's far too big for one person. They bought it over 30 years ago, you see. Ideal for a growing family, but when it got down to me on my own, the bills were terrifying. So I thought a comfy little bed sit would be just right. Then I saw your advert. You know, I still can't believe I've been so lucky finding such a cosy little home from home. Oh, well, you just think on. Anything you want, you've only got to ask. Oh, within reason, of course. <laughs> and if you want to bring any of your mates round, you know, just feel free. Thanks, Mrs. Ogden. You'll find folk round here are very friendly. The only one you've got to watch out for is that Vera Duckworth at number nine. Still, you'll find that out for yourself as soon as she opens a big mouth. <laughs> here, I tell you what. Now, why don't I take you down to the Rovers when I finish this lot? I could introduce you. Uh, well, that's very good of you. Right, you're on. Uh, but I don't think so, not tonight. I'd, I'd love to go, but if it's all the same to you, some other time, perhaps. All I want to do this evening is put my feet up and relax with a book. I can't think of anywhere better to do it than here. Well, if you were earning a few bob, what do you want to give it up for? Because I don't think I'd make a successful designer and a good mum. Not at the same time. Oh, you've got a family, have you? Just the one, Kate. She's six now. So you see, I'm not just a kid out of art school. No, nope, you're certainly not. I still don't understand why it was me you chose. I mean, there must have been hundreds of people you could have gone to. Oh, that's right. But like I said, Mr. Baldwin... Mike. Mike. I have been around. I'm not new to this business. And I know how important it is to find the right person to take up an idea. Develop it, manufacture it. Not only do they have to be able to do the job, they have to have the capacity and the outlets and be prepared to take a bit of a gamble. And you thought I'd fit the bill? Well, I think so. Smallish factory, casual clothes, mainly denim, but flexible enough to switch some production to any new idea that may come along. Ah, providing it's the right one. Of course. Well, you've certainly done your homework, I'll give you that. I always do. So tell me, what's this new idea of yours that's going to revolutionise the fashion world? I didn't say that, but I do think that with my ideas and your backing, we could both cash in. Sounds interesting. I uh, could bring the designs round tomorrow. Twelve o'clock? On the dot. And now, look, I really am sorry for hounding you the way I did, but it did seem the only way. Believe you me, it is the only way. If you want anything in this world, you've got to go out and get it. Yeah, I know. 